Lintels and ginger nuts, boys and girls, welcome to IL-2 Sturmovic Great Battles, a World War II combat flight sim developed by 1C Game Studios or whatever they're called, uh, which is bloody good fun, and I'm going to play for you today. Back in the day, I did some Iron Man flight sim series in Rise of Flight and in the original IL-2 Sturmovic 1946. Uh, they were good fun, and I'm going to do another one today. Because why not? People have requested it for years, so hell, why not? We've got the fancy new IL-2 Sturmovic Great Battles to play with these days, and it's quite good. I enjoy it a lot. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Been looking forward to it for a while, actually. Should be jolly good fun. Now, if you're not familiar with the overall Iron Man concept, basically what we're going to do is we're going to play this game as a World War II fighter pilot. And the idea is, is we're going to do a career. We're going to do a campaign where we try and fly our way through World War II day by day and maybe get to the end, but almost certainly not. Because when we die or we are captured and taken prisoner behind enemy lines, that will be the end of the Let's Play. We only have one life in this. No retries. That's your lot. We'll fly. We'll hopefully shoot down some baddies. And if we get shot down ourselves and we don't survive, that's it. End of the Let's Play. Iron Man should be fun. Uh, I should caveat all of this with the usual disclaimer for flight simulator-related stuff. All the equipment I'm using, joystick pedals, track AR, etc., will be listed in the description below the video. Uh, if you have any questions about that, my technical peripheral setup stuff will be down there in the in the thingy more what's it. And uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get on with it. Now, the game comes with a career option here, which we're not actually going to use because I think it's a bit eh. It's a little bit eh. It's a little bit boring. The the missions it generates are a little bit meh. Not very interesting, not very exciting. So what we're going to do is instead, we're going to use a third party add-on that someone developed called Pat Wilson's Campaign Generator. Uh, uh, unsurprisingly developed by a bloke called Pat Wilson. Um, I used a similar version of PWCG back in the Rise of Flight Let's Play many years ago. Uh, he's still making it, and he's made a version that works for IL-2 now, which is really cool. So we're going to be using that instead, because it's honestly much better than the vanilla career mode. Um, so I'm actually going to exit the game now, head over to PWCG, and I will speak to you guys in that screen, I guess. BRB! All right, ladies and gents, welcome to Pat Wilson's Campaign Generator version 12. To coincide with the recent patch for the main game that came out. Uh, here it is, everybody. We're going to make a new campaign. And we have a choice here of many different nations to play as. We're going to be, it's going to be a single player mode campaign, for one thing, not co-op. Um, and we have many choices of service. We have the, the Voy, 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 you know, Voy, Voy, the VVS. That's the, 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 the the Russian, or the Soviet, really, um, Air Force in World War II. We're not going to be playing as them. Uh, you have the Normandy thing here, this nationality. That's actually the Normandy Niemann's um, French, Free French Squadron that fought on the Eastern Front, if I believe. If I, if I recall, that is. Not totally sure, but I think that's what that's meant to be. We have, of course, the Royal Air Force. We have the Free French, we have the Royal Canadian Air Force, we have the United States Army Air Force, we have the Luftwaffe, and we have the Regia Aeronautica from Italy. We're going to be playing as Shock Horror, the Free French, in this one. I have decided... I'll make the campaign name... Uh, Free French Iron Man. There we go. We're going to be playing as the Free French because it's a bit more unusual. Now, player name. The name of our... Um, our, uh, what do you call it? The Our pilot. He has a name. He's called Gaston Bertello. There we go. A recurring character from a, a live stream I did of Rise of Flight once. As the, as the French. Oui, oui. Uh, and, and our character in that was called Gaston Bertelot. And uh, he's going to make a, uh, make a comeback here today in, in the Second World War, flying in the Free French 
squadron in the Royal Air Force. And uh, next step, campaign map is going to be Bowden Platter, because we're going to be doing using the Battle of Bowden Platter campaign map for this one, which is basically going to be sort of late 1944, essentially the 1st of September 1944 is when we're going to begin. Uh, so basically just prior to Operation Market Garden, essentially, the Allies have conquered, well, liberated, <laughs> liberated most of France. They're pushing now through Belgium and through the Low Countries and into Germany itself. Um, next step. Our role will be fighter. Our pilot rank is going to be a pilot officer. We're going to be a commissioned officer as opposed to a warrant officer. Um, and our squadron is going to be 326 squadrons. The only one available when you're playing is the Free French. They fly Spitfires. They are 326 squadron. Their status is competent, apparently, so we're a decent-ish squadron. They fly Spitfire Mark 90s and Spitfire Mark 14s from Duren Airfield, which I believe is just outside Antwerp. And it's going to be on the Bowden Platter map. So, next step. Create campaign. Got to be a bit patient with old PWCG here. It's, it's It can be a little slow sometimes. It's a little laggy. There we go. And here we are. Brilliant. So, we have the chalkboard here with uh, our current squadron on it. Everybody in it. Squadron leader Emile Gallet. It's 37 missions, 4 victories. Which you might think is not a lot of victories for quite a lot of missions, but this is actually pretty accurate, historically speaking. Um, it was pretty rare for you to get a ratio of missions to victories much higher than that, ultimately. Uh, however, they're all here. Now, the wonderful thing about Pat Wilson's campaign generator is that usually he takes into account all the historical records available. So there's a very good chance that a lot of the pilots in this squadron here were real ones that actually flew in real life in 326 Squadron. With the exception, of course, of Gaston. There he is. And uh, I can click on his photo there to change his pilot picture, but honestly, that's kind of perfect. What a dashing fellow. Uh, what other options are available? Let's have a look. Want somebody who looks suitably French. Oh, he's not bad. He's got a bit of a Gastonish look about him, hasn't he? Who else have we got? Oh, there he is. Again. Mm. Oh, that's that's an American uniform, that won't do. What's that? What's what's he doing in the British fold, eh? Maybe him? Nah. He's not so bad, actually. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, hello. Oh yes. That guy's got Gaston written all over him. All right, that's that's our man, right? If we click finish here, it'll reset the photo properly, I think. Gaston! There he is! No one flies like Gaston. No one shoots down Huns like Gaston. No, no one goes up diddly up, up in a plane like Gaston, I suppose. Uh, awards and citations. I don't think we'll have any here other than our pilot's wings, I, I expect. Yeah, there we go. Just, just just, our pilot's wings, our little badge there, our RAF badge. So we are, of course, French, but we are flying with the Free French and the Royal Air Force, so there you go. Our pilot log, we can have a look at here. I'm going to assume this is going to be completely empty. Yep. Marvelous. I'd like to think that maybe uh, Gaston here, he was, he was liberated from a, from a, from a prison in France somewhere. He was locked up by the by the Germans for being unruly and, uh, you know, generally a bad egg, causing trouble and stuff. And so when the Allies liberated France, he was he was liberated from prison. And, uh, and now he's back flying in the Air Force for the Free French. And uh, perhaps he flew during the Battle of France back in 1940, I like to think perhaps. And then he got shot down. Um, and then went to a prisoner of war camp or something. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, we'll, we'll have a think about that. But anyway, Gaston, there he is, with his pals, with his chums, here in 326 Squadron. Uh, there's other things we can look at here. Personnel, um, which I'm not going to muck around with for now. 
there is activity, which we can leave the squadron transfer. There's the squadron journal, equipment request, squadron log, etc. All this is going to be very uninteresting reading right now because we've not done a mission yet. Uh, there's intelligence, which is a little more interesting. We can go to the intel map here. And we can have a butchers at the local area and what we happen to know about enemy squadrons nearby and friendly squadrons nearby and the front lines and stuff. And you'll have to give it a minute here. It takes a little while to load. There we go. Bowden Platt's the map we want. Again, got to give it a second, I think. Unless... No, I think we're good. Okay, right. So... Um... Do we have the right map loaded? I don't think we have the right map loaded right now. This doesn't look... Oh, wait, no, here we go. Here we go. This is very difficult to use, you know. I think I'm just going to have to use the bar at the bottom here. There we go. All right, so that's where we're based, just outside Antwerp, as I said. These are the front lines right now. The red is on our side. The black is the Germans. Uh, there's Brussels down there. There's Ghent over there. We've got 139 Squadron based over there. we got 184 and 56 based here. I believe 56 Squadron was the squadron I flew in in the Rise of Flight campaign, actually. And we got 193, 66, 326. That's us and 403 based over here at Antwerp. And then we should have some Americans. Yes, the Americans are here as well. 50th Fighter Group, 36th, 354th, 365th. 352nd, the 474th, 358th. Are there any bomber groups down here? American bomber squadrons? Yep, 410th bomber group. And the 387th bomber group. And the 437th transport group as well. Which is relevant, actually, because Market Garden will be kicking off soon. The Allies will be attempting to push forwards up through Holland and take Eindhoven... Uh, Nijmegen up here, and then the bridge finally at Arnhem. And of course, as we know from reading the history books, the mission, the operation was a failure. The Allies failed to take Arnhem. Um, but that will all take place over the course of our campaign, and assuming I don't get shot down in the first mission, we'll get to see Market Garden play out beneath us from the comfort of our Spitfire cockpit. It should be interesting. Um... I believe there's even sort of like uh, I believe Pat Wilson's campaign incorporates stuff like the actual airdrops of the paratroopers and stuff, and I think we might be able to go for like flight escort for the transports and things. Should be interesting. That's what I've heard anyway. That's what was in the patch notes. So there's the intel map, uh, intelligence reports. We got enemy squadrons and friendly squadrons. We got JG one there. JG-26, Flying Fokker Wolves. JG-27. Yep. All the bad Germans will be flying against us. It's going to be lots of Fokker Wolves and lots of 109s, I suspect. Yeah, 109 G-14s and G-6s. These guys are all flying 190 A-6s and A-8s. Anything more fancy and advanced than that? No uh, ME262s just yet, I assume. Attack squadrons. They're in Fockles. Ah, no, here we go. KG-51 is equipped with ME262s. So, yeah, enemy jet fighters. That'll be interesting to deal with. Bomber squadrons, JU-88s. Uh, interceptor squadrons, some BF-110s. Oof, wouldn't, 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 wouldn't be flying one of those death traps. ZG26 as well. It's an, uh, yeah, well, say I just clicked on the same bloody one. And transport squadrons flying GAU-52s. Oddly enough, it's actually flyable in this game, the JU-52 transport plane. Um, I've never... I don't even know if you can do a career in one, but I, I'd be interested to see if you can. I know that I've, I've played the multiplayer for IL-2 back in the day, and I remember the multiplayer made use of the JU-52s, where you could have players ferrying supplies from one place to another in the game, and then the other players had to fly escort for them and stuff. It was kind of interesting, actually. I have no idea if you can do an actual, like, flying career in one, though, but uh, it, it would be vaguely interesting to try, actually, I have to admit. It'd be very different from your usual IL-2 campaign, wouldn't it? Anyway... Uh, configuration. Simple config. Uh, we're going to make air density medium, ground density, leave it medium, AA density medium, CPU allowance medium, structures medium. Um, 
basically trying to get the balance between game performance there and um, actually having a relatively interesting map crowded with enemies and friendlies alike. And uh, that's all there is to it. Now we just got to generate our first mission. Uh, we can do a mission, a lone wolf mission, where we just take off by ourselves and wander around, which is tempting to do just to sort of get a feel for our, our, our aeroplane and the local area. Maybe I'll do that. We've just arrived at the base, joined the squadron, and squadron leader says, Right, jump in your kite, old boy. Except he's French, isn't he? So jump in your aeroplane, sir, and go fly around a bit and uh, learn the local area, see what's going on. Um, fly a few circuits and then land again, and uh, we'll see what you're made of. So yeah, maybe we'll do that. Lone Wolf mission. I've never tried. I've never messed around with a lone wolf mission feature, so I've got to be honest with you. I have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, so, where the mission is, we're in the Spitfire Mark Fourteen. We could change that because this squadron has Mark Fourteens and they have Mark Nines. Now, between you and me, folks, I actually prefer the Mark Nine, but the Mark Fourteen is a bit more powerful as an airplane. It's a lot faster. Um, it's also a very new airplane. It just got added to the game in the recent patch. If you pre-ordered the Battle for Normandy DLC, which I did. Um, and I'd, I wouldn't mind practicing it a little bit in it because I've barely flown the Mark 14. So, let's see. Weather report. Heavy cloud cover, low altitude. Oof. The cloud layer is at, I think, 1,000 meters. Uh, the wind speed is 5 meters a second. Wind direction is 197. So it's a bit of a windy, horrible day, really. Primary objective. You've chosen to fly alone. Be careful. Assigned pilots, except it's assigned as a bunch of pilots, which it probably shouldn't have because we're flying alone, right? Uh, let's go to the map. We can fix that in a minute. Ah, we can actually see what's going on in the area as we're flying this mission. So it's one of the fun things about Pat Wilson's campaigns is stuff happens in the world in general, even if you're not really doing anything, which is why the Lone Wolf mission feature kind of exists. It's if you just want to take off and fly around and see what's going on on the day, you can totally do that. So as you can see here... Uh, the Allies are actually making a push northwards towards Rusendal up here on the ground. That's where all these arrows are. The ground troops are making a, a, an, a, an attack up this way. Um, now, let's see. The, 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 the basic thing that the game has plotted out for us is that we're going to take off and do a little patrol of the front line and then come back again. No idea if we're actually going to do that. I'll probably just fly around a little bit around Antwerp and have a look around. Um... Can't promise you it'll be a super action-packed this first mission, honestly. I, but it's all about getting to know the aeroplane and trying, you know, trying to successfully land it and take off into the damn thing, you know, uh, so we don't kill ourselves in a very embarrassing way later. Uh, so there's other squadrons about, though. Looks like Americans are up and about doing stuff. 354th are also doing some recon. It looks like, yeah, they're doing some frontline recon. The 48th are doing. A ground attack on something up there. Near Wundsrecht? I think that's an airfield. They're probably attacking an airfield. And the 50th fighter group are doing another recon patrol as well. Out of Deist down there. Interesting. So there's going to be lots of Americans flying about the place. Hopefully they don't shoot us down by accident. Um, uh, so let's see. Uh... We can actually we can actually manipulate these waypoints if we want to. That is the fun thing. So I don't know if I can actually delete them, but I can move them around if I want to. I'm kind of thinking I might make this a little bit shorter. We'll just have a little little butchers around the front lines here, and then quickly come back home. Is what I think we'll do. We'll go like that. And we'll, we'll move that out there because that really doesn't need to be there. That's kind of that's kind of daft, if I'm honest. Yeah, that's something like that kind of works for me. Really, that's much more reasonable. All right. Um, next ooh, to the waypoint screen, where we can actually change like what our cruise speed is going to be and our heading. And well, not our heading. But we can change our cruise speed and our altitude for each of these bits. Um, this is honestly fine. I'll leave it as is. Our fuel, we'll take a full fuel complement just to be on the safe side. 
And apparently we're going to take off at 1600 hours, so 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We could change that if we wanted to, as you can see, but I'm going to leave it as it is. Uh, we'll go next to pilots assigned for this mission, and as I said, I think I'm going to get rid of everybody except for us. I'm tempted to have us fly along with a wingman, but uh, nah. So the question is, how do I unassign you? I can, with the mouse wheel, move them in the position of the person in the squadron. Um, I think maybe I just click on them. Yeah, there we go. Oh, I've actually unassigned myself from the mission. That's awkward. There you go. It's just pilot officer Gaston. Out in his Spitfire Mark 14. We could change it to the Mark 9 if we wanted to. In fact, it's, it, it keeps track of all the aircraft the squadron has down to the serial number, which is kind of fun. So we actually got a bunch, a few spare Mark 14s and a bunch of spare Mark 9Es. Uh, but like I said, I'm going to try out the 14 because I, uh, it's a tricky one, really. Um, we will have the E-type wings installed and we'll have a mirror above the cockpit that allow, allow us to quickly glance behind us. Um, the 150 octane fuel will leave out and the gyro gun sight I'm not going to use because I don't really like the gyro gun sight. I find it very confusing. Uh, okay, cool. Accept uh, mission. Generating mission. This might take a little moment. And basically, once this is generated, I'm going to hop back into the game and uh, we're actually going to fly it. So uh, I'll see you guys in a moment. Okay, here we are back in the game, and uh, I'm just going to show you for the, for just this once how you do this. Once the, uh, the the mission generator has generated the mission for you, you actually go to the missions tab in here, and then you go down to PWCG, and then you select your mission from here, and the one we want, obviously. There's, there's some test ones I did, but we want the Free French Iron Man, 1944, 1st of September, Lone Wolf, 326 Squadron, stationed at Dern, however, however you pronounce that. Primary objective, you have chosen to fly lone, be careful. This is my realism settings, for those of you curious. Um, basically, maximum realism with the exception of I can have turn on the autopilot if I want to. Um, I have radiator assistance on. Now, the, the Spitfires we're going to be flying actually have automatic radiators in them anyway, but I have that turned on regardless because I find it annoying to have to micromanage that sometimes. Um, we have a warmed-up engine because prior to going out on missions, the engineers would actually warm up the engines of the aircraft in real life, so no reason not to have that turned on. Um, and, uh, yeah, navigation markers for the map, the instrument panel at the bottom, and enhanced aircraft visibility to make it a little bit, tiny bit easier for us to spot distant aircraft. Um, we allow, allow spectators so I can go in external views and handling tips um, just to help me familiarize myself with the new plane, honestly because it will sometimes shout out useful information at the bottom left, like uh, what speed I should be flying when trying to land the bloody thing. So that could be helpful. So I'm going to leave that on for now. I might turn that off later, though. Um, accept and uh, start. And I'm going to go ahead and skip the loading screen here. So be right back. All right, here we are. We're on the briefing screen in the mission. And as you can see, the game itself has picked up the mission files that we, we generated from the, the campaign generator. No problem. Uh, it's even picked up the ground pushes as well. We've got the red arrows on, on, on the map here indicating where the ground troops are going. And uh, it does occur to me right now as I look at the map that we are already close to the uh, the front lines, aren't we? With our little airfield here. I should probably watch out for flak and stuff, I suppose. But anyway, as you can see, it's got the patrol in here. It's got um, our altitudes and stuff. And they're actually in imperial measurements now. So it's telling me 230 miles per hour, one minute for the leg. And uh, 2,100 feet is, is the altitude we're supposed to be flying for this, although I can do whatever I like, really. I'm by myself. Um, so, yeah, because we're obviously flying a British plane, which means Imperial measurements. So I have it set to Imperial measurements in the game, which makes life a little bit easier when it comes to checking my own instruments in the aircraft. Um, we can go to our setup and have a look at the plane itself. This is the old Spitfire Mark 14. It's a Spitfire with the Rolls-Royce Griffin engine instead of the Merlin that the earlier ones used. And it's a bit of an odd-looking plane, I always thought, the old Mark 14. I thought it was a little bit strange. Um, it's got that kind of cool five-bladed propeller, which is a bit different and interesting. But um, it just sort of... Oh, pardon me, folks. I just need to adjust my headset ever so slightly. I, you can sometimes hear it when I do that on the microphone, and I apologize if that's the case. Um... 
But I always felt like it sort of looked a little bit like someone tried to draw a Spitfire badly. Um, like it looks like a Spitfire, but it just doesn't look quite right somehow. It's an odd one. But anyway, um, here are our settings, some of which have been imported over from the, the campaign generator. We've got 100% fuel. We have the E-type wing and the mirror. Now there's other stuff you can take. You can take bombs. Now the E-type wing, basically the difference is we've replaced the 303 machine guns with some 50 cals. Um, essentially is what we've done because 50 cals kick ass and 303 machine guns are a bit crap. We've also got 20 millimeter Hispano cannons in the wings as well. So that's good. We have a mirror, which actually causes us to lose about one kilometer an hour of speed, but it does allow us to quickly check behind us by glancing upwards. We can also have the clipped wings, which allows us to maneuver a little bit better at low altitude. So it's tempting to take the clipped wings, but uh, I'm going to go without for now. And then there's, of course, the gyro gun sight that I don't want and the 150 octane grade fuel that um, I'm not going to use, even though it would give us a little bit of a performance boost. I don't think I'm going to use it for now because I'm not even sure it was actually in use at this point in the war in real life anyway. So um, there we go. We've got 500 rounds of 50 cal ammo, 300 rounds of Hispano Mark II 20 millimeter cannon ammo. These are the big ass 20 millimeter cannons protruding out of the wings there. And uh, the gun conversions I've set is quite low, actually. It's 180 meters, which I think roughly comes to about 200 yards. Since, uh, you know, British planes, they had their uh, gun sights synchronized to yards rather than meters. Um, so basically that means that I have my gun sight configured and my guns configured so that they should hit the enemy at quite close range. Because I tend to get quite close to the, the enemy target before opening fire in this. Um, by default, the gun convergence is way out here. Now, if we were attacking ground targets, I might want to consider making that a bit longer because you're going to shoot at a ground target typically from much further away, but uh, we'll be fine for now. Um, we have lots of choices of paint scheme, uh, as you can see. Quite a few, in fact. Um, I think I'm just going to stick to the default, but there's lots of them here, as you can see. Quite a lot of them. There's even a Belgian one, like a post-war 1948 Belgian skin, which is kind of interesting. Um, there's also custom ones. Well, there would be custom ones if we were flying the Mark IX Spitfire, because this plane just came out in the game. Um, there aren't any uh, custom schemes in the, in the skin pack for the the, the campaign generator. So, um, but yeah, uh, I'm going to go with the default. Default's fine. And we can also have a photo our sweetheart back at home there you go i'm sure you can probably put a custom photo in there somehow i've never figured out how you're supposed to do it though anyway uh accept start basically take off do what we want do whatever we want okay game is paused it's unport whoa uh i pressed the wrong button there i got the map open right for takeoff. Rabbit leader taking off. Go ahead and open our canopy here, because that was standard procedure when taking off in these things. In case you flip the aircraft over on the runway or something and they need, they need to, you know, try and extricate you from the wreck, you were typically supposed to take off with the canopy open. Here we are, on the runway. Uh, let's crack on, let's go. You can see I've got the mini-map down in the corner there. I'm actually going to turn that off. You can make a big version of it if you want to, but I'm going to turn it off. And, uh, yeah, let's go. Um, here's all our instruments. Speed, artificial horizon, variometer that shows our climb or descent, altimeter there, uh, directional indicator there, our side slip meter there, turn and bank indicator, essentially. Compass, oh, down in the bottom of the thing there. Now, I should be... I'm using a device called Track IR basically to look around the cockpit here. Uh, instead of using the hat switch on my joystick or the mouse or something. And um, the, the, it's, it's a slightly imperfect device. Occasionally my, 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 my pilot's head will go all noodly and look off in completely the wrong direction. It does happen from time to time. Um, like it just did then, so fair warning. Anyway, let's skedaddle gently increase the throttle. It says, yeah, okay, so... Because we've got that big, powerful engine with that big five-bladed propeller. The plane likes to swerve off to the right. 
when you feed the throttle in on takeoff, it's quite realistic and it's quite difficult. Spitfire was legendarily difficult to take off and land with on in on a good day. But the Mark 14 is even worse. Oh dear. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I'd much rather be flying the Mark 9 right now, I gotta say. Also, I think the propeller pitch has been set wrong, which is why we're not taking off yet. There we go. That's better. Okay, pull up. Up we go. Raise the gear. Go ahead and close the canopy. Okay, I'm going to feed in a little bit of uh, elevator trim here with that trim wheel down there. And we should be ready to go. I'm going to reduce throttle a bit. I'm going to reduce the propeller pitch slightly. And we should be good to go. Beautiful. Excellent. Oh, big cloud of smoke over there. Oh, lots of fire as well. Yeah, there is a war on. I'd almost forgotten. Okay, so there's our airport down there. Our little airfield. Apparently I'm being told I should climb at 180 miles per hour in this thing. Good to know, I suppose. So there's the airfield. Gonna get used to that. Because we'll be taking off and landing from it quite frequently. And it's just next to Antwerp here, and it looks like... The Germans or someone has been bombing the crap out of the place because uh, there's fire and smoke all over the shop. Some over there as well. Probably keep an eye out, make sure there's no jerrys around flying about the place that might shoot me down, actually. Correct with the elevator trim here to make sure we're flying straight and level, more or less. There's Antwerp down there. All the little houses. Fly over this estuary type thing here and check out what the heck's happened here. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of destroyed buildings down this end of town. Of course, if I get up the little mini-map here, yeah, we're probably quite close to the front line. Wonder what that did that. Might, might have been artillery fire, might have been enemy bombers, who knows. But this place has definitely seen better days. That's for sure. This bit's still on fire. more going on over here. Right, I should keep my head on a swivel here because there might genuinely be a bunch of Germans around. There's a bunch of Americans around the place too, at some point, or will be anyway. It's feeling a bit more power. Let's see what kind of speed we can get out of this old Mark 14. Like I said, I've not flown this very much in the sim. I've flown the Mark 9 Spitfire a lot more. So I don't really know what to expect from it, but then I know for a fact it is a bit faster. And probably a little bit less agile, because it's always a trade-off, right? What do we have over there? Something shooting at them, whatever it is, and that something probably looks like it's on our side of the line, so those look like they might be Germans. Um, I'm... Let's have it get a little bit of a closer look, but only a little bit. I don't fancy my chances against five, six Germans by myself. That would not be good. Oh look, there's some more stuff up there. Oh boy. Black shooting at that too. What do we have over here? I hope these are American. I'm going to be honest, I really hope they're American, but I really suspect they're probably not. Oh, no, that looks like a P-47. Okay. Maybe there's some Germans on the ground shooting at them, then. 
Well, maybe the P-47s are chasing something. Oh, Jesus, that's something behind me there. I'm not sure how friendly you are, good sir. I'm going to get out of your way. Anything in the mirror? Oh, not a minute. What have we got here? You're, you've got smoke coming from you. You're not looking very healthy. Whatever you are. You know what? That looks like it might be an American chasing a German, but I'm not sure. Should probably steer clear, really, shouldn't I? If I was feeling sensible, maybe I would. But I am Gaston! Oh, those are Germans, all right. Those are Germans. Bloody hell. All right. Um... Well, we can't just let them fly here with impunity, can we now? I do have ammunition. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hello, sir. Hello. Yeah, I'm not... Okay. There you go. Our first non-mission, and I nearly got myself killed. What a genius. Oh boy, they're not happy. His plane might be damaged, but he's not happy. Right, let's go low altitude. We've clearly bitten off slightly more than we're supposed to be able to chew here. Where is he? Well, we should be able to outmaneuver the, the FW-190, and that's what that, Ameri that, that German plane was. But I don't know if we can outrun him. Also, I'd really like to know where my airfield is. See, we were supposed to learn important information like that today on our little fact-finding tour of the area, but instead, I've got myself into some jolly fine trouble. Right, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fly in this gentle curve as these guys follow us and as they close in to take shots at us. I'm going to tighten that curve and hopefully they'll miss. Gonna give it a go, but he, he can't stay with us. Yeah, there we go. What I really don't want to do is black out here. We're going quite fast at the moment. Right, I'm gonna cheat here a little bit and use the map. So our airfield's down to the south of us right now. Oh yeah, the Germans are attacking some ground targets in town. That's what's going on right there. Nothing we can do about that really by ourselves, unfortunately. Not if we want to get ourselves killed. Not if we don't want to get ourselves killed, rather. There were definitely some Americans. I, I'm sure I saw a, a P-47 up there at some point, but he seems to have gone missing. All right, there's one's just flown over behind me there. There's one in front of me here. Two behind me, actually. Good yell. All right, all right. Ease up on the turn. Poor pilot's dealing with a lot of G's right now. Let's see if we can try and get ourselves going a bit further south. try and hug the treetops if we can. Try and maybe force one of these inexperienced Germans to crash into something. Because there should be some AA guns on the ground back at our airbase that can help us out a little bit. Are these all Germans after me? Hopefully some of them are Americans, but I doubt it. I don't see anybody shooting at anything other than me, really, so... That's 
bank to the left now. I see you back there. Right. Airfield should just be down in front of us here somewhere. There's this one very stubborn chap behind me right now. Behind and slightly above me. Still with smoke coming from his engine though. I don't think that's just exhaust. I think that's definitely leaking oil or something. There's, there's like at least three of them still after me, I think. We're about to fly over the airfield and hopefully some AAA can give us a hand here. I'm, I'm hoping we've got some AAA. Please tell me we've got some AAA. I see some trucks down there. That's not very helpful. At the very least, I can crash land over my own ho home airfield, I suppose. Oh yeah, here they come. We did have the full... I think I could see a AAA gun just down there, actually, so... It'll take them a minute to rotate towards the enemy and actually start shooting them, though. Yeah, okay, flax popping off. I can see the explosions. Nice. Hopefully they'll either be shot down or they'll get the message and bugger off. Or I'll die, of course, you know, that's always an option. There's an awful lot of them. Again, I'm hoping some of these are Americans. Mon dieu! I need some assistance! Right now! There's a lot of sausage munchers! About to... Oh wow, he nearly flew into me, that guy. Situational awareness fail right there. Oh, 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 don't black out, dude. Don't black out. There, a little bit of negative G. That sorted it out. Get the blood back in your head. giving up are they and there's not an awful lot shooting at them either which bothers me hello chaps they are very low and very slow these guys if we had any help with us oh god <sighs> that's close I'm going to back off the throttle a bit here and see if I can just slow us down a little bit. I don't like that. It, I can just about see him behind me there and I don't like it at all. But we're so close to blacking out right now, there's not a lot I can do. Come on, Gaston. You can do this, I believe in you. Let these bastards crash into the ground or something. horn there is me warning me that I've lowered the throttle and the gear is still up. Which is of course intentional right now, admittedly. Right, let's put some welly in. I've lost a lot of speed. Hi chaps. Could you please stop bothering me and let me go? 
certainly giving them the runaround, aren't I? Famous last words, don't play things like that. Dave, that would be a very bad idea. If I can quickly just... Nah. If I try to go for one of them, the others will just shoot me is the problem. Whoa, 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 whoa. Nearly stalled, nearly stalled. Not in the ideal aircraft for this, really. I'd be, rather be in the Mark 9. It's better at turning. Whoa, 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 whoa. How's my radio temperature doing? It's getting a bit hot. flat guns. This is intolerable. Might just have to crash land and leap out. And uh, basically hope that they leave me alone and don't shoot me on the ground. Which uh, might be a dangerous hope, honestly. Come on, Gaston. Get it together, man. Don't black out on me. Not at this altitude, that would be bad. Let's cut the throttle a bit, try and slow down again. Ooh, 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 ooh. Uh oh. <sighs> That's bloody close. Maybe let's try and drag them over in a different direction. Maybe there's some more guns over here that can shoot them. I don't know. How's my wings looking? It definitely took some hits back there, but I don't think it hit anything important, thank goodness. I don't suppose they can bloody scramble something to help me out here, could they? Well, they can't get a bead on me. Much of one, anyway. Fortunately, there's nobody else here to take advantage of the fact that these guys are all very low and very slow. if I got any hits there. If I did, it wasn't very much... wasn't anything serious. I think I hit him again. Or this was a different one, I'm not sure. Problem is I don't have an awful lot of ammo, so we can't do this all day. Who are les Américains? That's what I want to know. Alright, 
you bastard, come on. Oh, somebody's bloody shooting at me. That's not good. Wait, oui, wait, oui, is that enough? He's going down. Ha ha. <laughs> there we go. Kaboom. Did you ever come fucking... Shoot me down over my own airfield. Wow, that's quite a fireball over there. It's a good thing I told the engineers to give me some ammunition today. Uh, otherwise I would be in much more trouble. Okay, I should stop talking in this outrageous accent now. Okay, okay, okay. Uh oh. Friend coming in on my six o'clock there. And by friend I mean not a friend. Uh oh. <sighs> Flippin' egg. Oh boy! Oh boy! Alright, put your faith in God now, Gaston. Okay, we just managed to avoid that without blacking out and crashing. He was really rather keen on shooting me down there, that fella. Okay. All right, chill, Gaston. I know this is not an ideal situation, my friend. One of me. But it's okay, you've got this. It looks like there's maybe two of them left, Max. Worst case scenario, you can ditch the plane on the ground and then leg it. What's our speed like? Could possibly afford to lose a little bit more. Ooh! Uh, well, I think the engine just got a little too warm. Time to put this thing down. That canopy open. Let's find something brown to land on. All right, tail first is the procedure with this. Come on. Going a smidge faster than I want. There we go. Come on. Tail first. There we go. Beautiful. Textbook belly landing, except. Oh boy. Get out of the plane! We were being very much shot at there. Hopefully, we survived. <laughs> Mission failed. Successful landing. Okay, I'll take that. Oh my goodness. That was very pissed. One very pissed German. He he was he saw we were crash landing and he was like, No, nah, I'm going to shoot you anyway, you French pig. Uh, not that he knew we were French, I suspect, but you know. Bloody hell. Okay, that was only 17 minutes, was it? It felt like an hour. Whew. Right. We shot down one enemy plane. Must have been his best friend or something. So what happened? Uh, we took off. There's lots of squiggly lines all over the place. The screen here is our flight path. Um, we shot down an enemy Fokker Wolf 190A8. Uh, we... The... Yeah, the... The the, the 190A, A8s and A6s blew up a whole bunch of stuff here at the docks. Um, other stuff happened out here on the front line, looks like. A bunch of enemy MG-34s and stuff were destroyed. Friendly P-47 went down, so the Americans obviously took, carried out their ground attacks. Up here as well. Enemy fuel storage destroyed. Airfield storage destroyed. Friendly M2 machine gun was destroyed. Yeah, there's some ground battles going on up here. 
and over here as well. And let's see what else. A 190A6 went down. A P51 went down, shot down by a 190. See, a lot was going on there, as you can see. Looks like some Germans carried out an attack on Loker in there. And another P-47 went down just outside there. Very action-packed afternoon, clearly. You may have noticed my frame rate wasn't particularly amazing back there during the mission in some points. And this is why, because all this was going on in the background. Uh, wow, okay. But we got one of the bastards. And then we crash-landed in a field just slightly north of the aerodrome here. Jolly good! That was an exciting first mission! <laughs> Although I never did get to practice landing the plane in the end, did I? Oh dear. Alright, well. Finish. Right, now we go back to the campaign generator and we uh, review the results. Alright, here we are. Welcome back to the campaign generator. Let's go to mission up on the top left here. And combat report. And this is where we get all the juicy details. So, there was us, Pilot Officer Gaston Berthelot, 326 Squadron, and us, Mark 14 Spitfire, which I have to admit, I have some respect for now, the old Mark 14. It did rather well for us back there. I have to admit. All things considered, it got us out of a pretty nasty scrape there. Fair enough. Uh, continue with claims. So now we go through what is a relatively historically accurate process here, because you didn't just magically get awarded your victories in real life. You actually had to go and talk to one of the one of the uh, the clerks or whatever after the mission was over. You climb out of your plane, and they did a chap would come up to you and be like, "Right, any claims, any victories?" And you'd you'd go off to a hut and you'd report everything in detail, and you'd have to type off an af after action report as well. Um, and we're going to claim one victory in our case. We destroyed a 190A6 or A8. We're not sure. Really, we can't be sh We can't honestly be sure. We're going to say an A6, possibly. I've already forgotten what it said on the map, anyway. Um, the main thing is we shot down a 190 over our own airfield, so plenty of people should have seen it to corroborate our story. Um, so we'll submit that. And hopefully we'll, you know, we'll actually get it awarded to us. Okay. Start debrief. And this will recount basically all the action that happened. Which we've kind of already seen through the in-game debriefing, but hey. Um, so I'll just, I'm just going to go debrief completed. And there we go. Here's our after action report. 326 Squadron, Gaston Berthelot, the Spitfire Mark 14. It was a lone wolf flight. Uh, let's see, remarks on flight and hostile aircraft. This mission was flown by pilot flight. Should be pilot officer Gaston Berthelot, flown from Dern Aerodrome. Claim status on the 1st of September 1944 near a bridge, apparently. Um, a 190A8, I think it was, it looks like, of. One JG-6 was brought down by pilot officer Gaston Bertolo, 326 Squadron. Hauptmann Volker Himmelfarb was the name of the guy we shot down, apparently. He was killed in action. And uh, we were flying a Spitfire Mark 14. Narrative? Took off to inspect aerodrome. Got jumped by a swarm of Huns brought one down then engine failure force a landing there we go next page notification of victory that's what we already read basically it was from one JG6 and he was called Volker Himmelfarb, apparently. He was a Hauptmann. He was a captain, no less. Uh, nice. So, finished. And off we go. We're off to a good start, then. One mission and one victory. And it wasn't even supposed to be a proper mission. We just got very unlucky slash lucky there. <laughs> Already pranged one kite in the process, though. 
Yes. Well. So begins the tale of Gaston Berthelot, 326 Squadron of the Free French, in 1944. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed watching this. There'll be more to come, right up until the point where Gaston's luck finally runs out. Probably should have done already today. We got very lucky. But there it is. Next time, we'll be flying a proper mission with the rest of the squadron going off to do who knows what, frankly. Um, but uh, even just this one was quite interesting. Uh, got more than, I, more than I bargained for, for sure. I was worried people would find the first mission a bit boring, but there we are. Anyway, ladies and gents, thank you very much. Have a good day. Stay safe. Safer than Gaston, anyway. And I'll see you next time. Thanks very much. Toodaloo.